Hello everyone, this is episode 14 of my Crewman series, and hopefully the last episode providing everything goes to plan. In this episode, as you can tell, it's time to finally conquer the hardest planet in the game, Eve. Yes, the time has come to land on Eve and return a Kerbal safely. Aldrin Kerman has stepped up to the challenge and will hopefully be performing the complex manoeuvre. But first, we have to rendezvous. I am still in my Ion Probe after performing a successful ghillie mission, and now it's a case of rendezvous. I realised that it would be more efficient to do several passes around the planet and wait until my separation is naturally close. And as you can see, after several passes, my separation becomes very close indeed. And since that saves me lots of fuel, I decide to wait it out. Luckily, you get to witness quite a swift transition. And there we go. And now we're on the last pass, and all we require is a small course correction. That saved us a lot of fuel, uh, despite the iron propulsion system's extreme specific impulse. Anyway, at the point of intersection, that we now have enough fuel to slow down and rendezvous and match orbits perfectly, after which Aldrin Kerman can return to his craft and begin the pinpoint landing. I was talking about having to perform quite a precise landing in the last episode because the landing spot I want to go to is not only below the equator uh, and in quite a different orbit to my current one and is also on a peninsula so if I miss I go straight into Eve's presumably toxic oceans and the whole mission is in jeopardy so I have to land on a peninsula and on that peninsula there's a specific mountain so it's quite complex which is why I've made my lander uh, part of a, it's a sort of rover hybrid. It has 20 rover wheels and is comprised of over 450 parts. And as you can see right now, <laughs> quite a large stutter in the game as it had to load the whole 600 part ship. Actually, it's probably less than 600 now because I've uh, decoupled some stages, but it's probably still in the mid 500s. And luckily, what you're watching is quite sped up footage for me. This whole mission took me hours. Anyway, we're now getting pretty close. Probably Aldrin can do the rest of this rendezvous with his EVA pack, taking the scientific data from Gilly's surface. There we go. We're now on our way, and that is one of the hardest parts of the mission done. Now we just have to... Uh, now I just have to land on Eve and return, which is also one of the hardest parts you can do in the whole game. Anyway... Um, in order to get back, uh, my Lando doesn't have enough delta V to get to Kerbin, it just has enough to get into EVE orbit. Because of that, I will be waiting until I'm already over the peninsula. Uh, there you can see it, it's at the bottom of the map view. Um, but yeah, my, I'll have to leave some sort of orbiter that I have built a docking port to, and my Lando also has a docking port, so hopefully... I'll, you can see I'm getting my trajectory down to land on that peninsula now. And once I do that, I'll then decouple the lander. My lander will fall down onto that trajectory, whilst I'll then switch back to the, mess, the rest of the rocket, the main ship, which will then get back into orbit, which is very inefficient, I know, but is the only way I thought of doing it. And then once that is in orbit, it stays there. I land, drive to the highest point, take off, and then rendezvous and dock with the main craft, which will take me home. You'll see what I mean later. But of course, since Eve's atmosphere is five times as thick as Kerbin's, landing on that peninsula requires quite a lot of guesswork in terms of how much I need to overcompensate my trajectory. You'll see I need to land sort of midway along that peninsula, but I end up getting my orbit trajectory almost onto the night side of the planet. I'll get this stage back into an orbit, not too hard, doesn't expend too much fuel, and now it's just a case of switching to the lander and just waiting. I think it's quite nice to switch to the IVA view during these moments, which you might see me doing a bit later, uh, because it makes the landings a bit more exciting. And yeah, this lander is comprised of over 400 parts, and because of that, the re-entry effects get quite extreme, as you're about to see. Also, it's useful to go into the IVA mood modes because, as you can see on the sort of bottom left side of the screen there, you have the radar altitude, which is different from the standard altimeter because that shows you how high you are above the actual terrain rather than the sea level, which is what the one on the main uh, 
HUD shows, which is actually really good for landings because the landing spot I want to get to is about seven and a half kilometers above sea level. You can see it now, it's sort of got quite a prominent shadow and looks a tiny bit, it might just be me, but it's a tiny bit like a pyramid. So I'll be driving up the side of it and reaching the point there at the top, which will save me. I think the difference between la uh, launching from seven and a half kilometers up and from sea level saves me about 4,000 uh, meters per second of delta V. The parachutes are just going to deploy now, and hopefully it doesn't tear the whole thing apart. There's a lot of drag affecting this thing, and it has a lot of parts, but yes. Luckily I've sort of made my own drogue chutes, I forgot to actually include my own, but let's not talk about that. And after a while the whole set of parachutes are deployed, and we're drifting towards the surface at a pretty safe velocity. But you'll notice I'm not going to land on the surface at the right angle, because of this I cut some of the parachutes, uh, I can afford to land at a slightly faster speed, and it'd be better to land at the right angle. With a bit of guesswork, I land pretty much at the same plane. And there we go, we've landed. A slight explosion, but after a check of the menu, it turns out that it was nothing serious, just the landing legs. After retracting the rest of my landing legs, it turns out that a few of them are actually stuck. So, luckily, they explode. Normally that would be a very bad thing indeed, but since the explosions don't break the other parts, a feature that hasn't been implemented yet, luckily. Um, once they explode, the rover drives along quite nicely, actually. Another thing that hasn't been implemented yet, which I'm actually quite thankful for, is the fact that EVE's atmosphere is not superheated. For those of you who have played Kerbal a long time ago, you may remember that Moho's atmosphere used to be superheated, and it made landings a lot harder. In, since EVE is obviously an analogue for Venus, its atmosphere should be incredibly hot, but luckily that's not been implemented. Venus's atmosphere, I think, is about 735 degrees Kelvin, which is extremely hot and is the hottest place in the solar system, other than the sun, of course. But uh, yeah, I think there's a tweet from Neil deGrasse Tyson, who said it would cook a 16-inch pepperoni pizza in 9 seconds, uh, just by being on the surface of Venus, which is quite extreme. Anyway, after a very long drive, which you luckily can sort of skip through with the miracles of post-editing, uh, we then reach the highest point. You can see it, we're extremely high now, and the atmosphere, although the uh, thing above the altimeter hasn't changed, that saved us, saved us a lot of fuel. You can see the extreme gravity is having quite an effect on our Kerbal. He's being pulled into the ground slightly. After planting the flag, the eve landing, we've finally landed. We've planted a flag at least on every body in the every celestial body in the game. And that's quite an achievement, but now the main goal of the series was to get back. It has to be a return mission for this to be legit, and that's where things get interesting. You can see that he actually uh, falls off the ladder a bit due to the high gravity. And when that happened, I was actually quite scared that he would sort of disintegrate because the gravity can do that to Kerbals. But on the second try, he gets up and things go well. Or rather, I say they go well. It then, after I retract my ladders and have a look around, I then remember that I didn't take a surface sample. And since I've accepted some contracts to do so, I'd be a fool not to. So I have to go back down and do it all again. I then fall off onto the lander and after several attempts to jump out on the perilously high uh, 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 gravity on EVE, I then can take my science samples and head back to the land. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's one of the hardest bits. During that drive up to EVE slopes, I had to do that all at a very slow speed, and at, at any point my engines could have hit the surface and the whole thing would be broken. But yeah, we're now about to launch, and there we go, the stages are dropping incredibly quickly to begin with, because of how um, tightly packed my asparagus setting is. I think there are 23 stages in the asparagus system, but quickly the weights will get a little longer and it all paces out, and yeah, we're already beginning to get quite a bit out of the atmosphere. You can see on the pressure gauge above there, at the top of the interface. You can also have a look at the fuel if you want to, to see uh, what's going on. I, yeah, I mean, this line has actually been pretty good, and but as you can see, my periapsis is still very low. 
because of how much drag there is. Once we get to this point though, we can now look down and see Eve, we can see the curvature of the planet, and it's actually beginning to look quite small. There we go, we're now, we've broken three of all the other parts, and you may be wondering why I've kept that sort of frame, it's because those cubic struts are massless parts, so they actually have no effect on the weight of my craft. So it doesn't matter. Now we're just in the, sl the lightest part, the tiny end stage, which will be enough just to push into orbit because of how light it is and how fast it's already going. With a nice view of the sun setting on part of Eve there, we can see the green tints. It's na we're now in orbit. The hardest part of the mission is probably over. And now it's just a case of matching inclinations, which isn't too bad. We're already pretty close. Uh, rendezvousing and then docking. We still have a bit of fuel left in the um, EVE lander stage, but since the main rocket has a probe core attached, uh, I decided to do the rest of the rendezvous with the main rocket, which stayed in orbit. After that, I'd say the hardest part of the mission is over. Then it's just a case of docking, which I've now got pretty used to throughout this series, and heading home to Kerbin. You can see after quite a large course correction to increase my apoapsis, to save time, because I I know I've got enough fuel and I can't really be bothered to wait, we end up with a pretty close separation. You can see we're now only about 3.7 kilometers away. It's now a case of getting a bit closer. We actually have to dock on this one. It's not just a case of rendezvousing, because the uh, actual ships have to be connected so that my lander capsule can be attached to this part of the ship you can see I'm piloting at the moment. But there we go, we can now see it against the sun or at least it's Corona, and now it's just a case of docking. It's not too bad, actually. Yeah, the hardest part is over. We've completed most of our contracts. We've got our science. We've planted our flags. Now it's just a matter of getting Aldrin home. This bit is actually probably the easiest part of the mission. Eve is the closest planet to Kerbin, so getting back requires uh, pretty much, I think, the least amount of fuel. So yeah, not too bad at all. Luckily, another thing was my rover was solar powered and on Venus that certainly wasn't work because of how thick its clouds are. It has clouds of thick sulfuric acid that encircle the whole planet. So luckily, again, that feature hasn't been implemented to EVE here. Otherwise the game and this mission would be quite a lot harder. Anyway, now we've got plenty of fuel and after this stage with the Rockamax skipper engine we have a nuclear stage with extra drop tanks, which, as you know, nuclear engines are the grandfathers of efficiency, and that'd be enough to easily get us home safe. After another pass around the planet, because although they're efficient, the burns for nuclear engines do take a while, we can then finish off and get into a roughly equatorial orbit. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I can tell that it's not, but as long as it does the job, it's fine. I switched to the Eve uh, to the Gilly landing site so that I can use time warp because since I was in a low altitude orbit around Eve, I couldn't time warp to the max from there. So I then switched back and there we go. We're now at a good point. Kerbin is just a bit ahead of us in a solar orbit, and now it's just a case of getting a separation. We can adjust all of this later. I just want to get some sort of encounter into the system, and an apoapsis is about two million meters does the job. Once we're into the system, it's just a small burn to get an encounter with the atmosphere, and all I have to do is get a pretty direct encounter because the atmosphere will slow us down enough. There we go. Since the Considering we started with a 600-part ship at launch, this has now boiled down to quite a small craft. It's now a lot easier on my computer to handle, and my FPS was normal again, which I've got to say I was so thankful for. Right up until the part where I launched from EVE, my FPS has been abysmal, so it was nice to finally get out. You can see this is a horrifically inefficient encounter with Kerbin, but since I have the fuel, I just cannot be bothered to wait. So yeah, <laughs> let's get Aldrin home ASAP. As you can see, I just opt for a direct encounter with no uh, periapsis, and here we go. We're already in the system. That did not take long at all because... We're only dealing with the inner planets, unlike the Jewel 5 mission last time. I end up going for the poles, just because I know that there will always be land at the poles, and it was at this point in the mission where I realised I do not have a parachute. 
So, yeah, after a sort of quick panic, I then decide just to burn uh, retrograde with the thruster and hope for the best. I did not want to have to redo this, especially at 2 FPS again. Um, so, yeah, I just decide to burn retrograde for as long as possible my nuclear engine, relying on the atmosphere to slow me down. I end up dropping the drop tanks prematurely, even though they have full of them just so I have less mass. Hopefully, when I land, the engine will explode and the ex engine will explode, absorb the impact, and I'll be fine. There we go. We've landed. The engine explodes, and there we go. With the, with pretty much everything other than the crew capsule obliterated, and there we go. A final explosion. We've just got the main capsule to land on the ground safely, and there we go. <laughs> the sun has just risen or set. I can't tell. But it's nice. It looks picturesque. There we go. Our flag is on the side of the capsule. Aldrin Kerman is on Kerbin again. And we can now recover the vessel. We've planted a flag on every planet and moon in the game. And I did that whole mission without quick saves. We've got a bit of extra science, but it certainly wasn't too much of a priority. Look at that. In our active flights, all we have are the flags. Well, the series is now over. And I have enjoyed it a lot. I hope you have. Uh, yeah, I'll be starting a new career mode series if, if anyone wants me to. Uh, with loads of mods. I've had a few requests to do so with KW Rocketry and other things. I'll be downloading loads if people want me to. But in the meantime, I've got some other videos planned. Give me suggestions. I'm open to pretty much any feedback. But anyway, thanks for watching. I've really enjoyed this and I hope you have. I'll see you in some future videos. Anyway, thanks. Yeah, bye.